Okay, so we have seen the introduction of uh, Josie. Uh, she um, explained that we have already a business process in, the, in garments and in textile. And um, we asked ourselves the question, is it blockchainable? And uh, she was a bit prudent to answering that question, but I think uh, I could say, uh, uh, yes, it, it is blockchainable. And we see already a few uh, initiatives there. And I wanted to present them to you, four of them, and maybe a fifth uh, initiative that we've seen before, but I'll, I'll leave it totally up to Marika herself, whether she wants to, to measure that uh, initiative against uh, the, the ruler we make together. Because my, my sole goal uh, for, the, for the rest of the 20, 25 minutes, more or less, is to give you some tools to judge for yourself whether a certain initiative that you can look up at the internet um, in this area, like uh, uh, blockchain and agro, in, in a broad sense, um, whether that initiative is a good one or a mature one. And uh, I, I try to give you a few tools. I've, I've, of course, I've built up that knowledge in, in the past few months, years. But I've actually used it today, today, just today, on Agro. And I made a spreadsheet. And I want to share that spreadsheet with you. Uh, and maybe you have uh, some comments on it. Because it, uh, it, it might be uh, uh, not as good as I think it is. Or the stuff might, might uh, uh, lack, you know. Or it's inconsistent, whatever. We'll see. First, the central question is, we have centralized parties and what we need to do um, if we think of blockchain abilities is how can we decentralize that how can we find solutions to ask these organizations or parties to become a service party and a service party that accepts more rules extra rules in the way they work or they they, uh, they have worked up to now and accept these rules so that they become replaceable too. So if I have one auditor who doesn't play according to these new rules of the game, then he might step out of the whole system. And it's a bit um, hard to, I think, to, to, to imagine how that would work, but we tried it step by step. Because I want to say, first, we don't, what we don't do uh, for the rest of the 20 minutes is we are not focusing on financial products. No financial stuff. So that means, of course, the blockchain can be of use uh, for escrow or for, for payments, whatever, but we don't use them as that, at least not tonight. We are only looking for uh, applications that you can use certain proofs of. Um, am I am I in the wrong position? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think. <laughs> For proofs of existence, proof of compliance to the rules, proof of certification. Um, what else have we got? Are you still awake? <laughs> <laughs> proof of existence, proof of compliance. Proof of origin. Proof of origin. What else? Standard. Sorry? Standard. Standards? Yeah. Compliance to standards. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Proof of identity, my favorite one. Another proof. Proof of ex existence. Existence. Did I hear that? Okay, proof of existence, yes. Yeah. Proof of ownership, you could say also. Yeah. So these kind of proofs we are looking for. And then if, if we, we can Google the internet, and we, we could do that, and you can do it tonight, uh, or tomorrow, or whenever, and then you will find uh, several parties that claim that they are specialized in blockchain and also in the, in the agro field. And uh, how, do we, how, do you, how do we approach them? How should we filter them? and find out about the true value for you in your situation. That depends, of course, what is your own knowledge level. 
So what we do, what we, are, we we will focus tonight on people that do not have an extra job. We don't need them around because most of the people don't have a, a, a thorough knowledge of blockchain. Um, uh, even people that that have learned a lot, like like Bas and me and a few others here in the room. Um, the more you know, the more you don't know. You know that you don't know. So, as a self, we, we, so we only have to look for the self-appointed experts here. So if somebody is oozing uh, self-expertise and uh, claim to be a blockchain expert, you have to be very aware. Because most of the times they are uh, making a few faults. And we try to we try to find out quickly that they are not good in their field. Because if we, um, if we can do that, we can skip them pretty quickly as well. Because if they, they make basic faults against the true nature of blockchain and the true added value of blockchain, which is only timestamped proofs, we have proofs of digital documents, we call them they're so-called hashes, these proofs, and we put them on the blockchain. That there, there we can say we put them on the blockchain. We can't pr put anything else on the blockchain, only proofs. And these are hashes. Hey, Hi. Hey, hey, I'm fine, thank you. I'm just in the middle of a presentation, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Um, uh, we are at the point that um, we try to focus um, on a specific group of um, blockchain applications in the field of alcohol. So we skipped the whole financial uh, blockchain products yeah. and we skipped uh, expert level knowledge already. So uh, we, we, we are focusing on average people trying to investigate whether a, a certain initiative in alcohol is, um, is good or not good, is mature or immature, whatever. So. And, and I try to give the people in the, in the rest of the 50 minutes a few tools that they can do for themselves at home. That's, that's the, the whole idea. Thank you. Okay. No, it was a good repetition for myself as well, so yeah. I know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Okay. So we might encounter uh, people on that, on that web uh, that tend to tend, pretend to be uh, experts. So we are looking for very easy faults they make. So if they make a big fault in the text, we might be, we might not give them a, a very high score. And we can also measure facts, like how many people are behind this? How many years are they, are they in the field? Um, do they have a, a good website? Is it informative? Um, do they educate us? Um, what, is their, what is their main goal? What are they doing? So these kind of things we want to know and we want to find out quickly because we have so many hits in Google and we want to go through them pretty quickly and we want to, want to find the best ones quickly. So if somebody is in the blockchain field and is busy with, a, with a, uh, something in alcohol, he has to focus. If they are too broad, they're doing everything, they're using blockchain as a Swiss knife for every problem there is. You know, the cows don't have uh, the drinking water, we solve that with the blockchain. You know, the building is collapsing, we'll solve that with the blockchain. If, if somebody is talking like that or uh, pretending that their solution is for everything, then you have to be very uh, suspicious of that. Okay? Um, what else have we got? Uh, oh yeah, we have like if, if somebody is with blockchain, busy with blockchain and trying to make a, a, an application you can use in the future, there's always legal stuff involved. If they don't address legal stuff on their site, it's worthless. It's just it's just 
uh, well, maybe not worthless, but it's a proof of concept. Uh, it's people that that they are trying to code a bit and uh, they're, they're trying to to look if it, uh, to see if it works or not um, in a in a in a sort of contained environment. Because as soon as you start outside and try to connect people and connect business processes using the blockchain, trying to find added value with these proofs on the blockchain, uh, proving something that has happened in the past and that's useful, useful in the future, um, this is always the next step. And the, the other next step is identity. I will shorten that up, ID. Okay. As soon as you're talking about useful applications with blockchain, somebody has to mention identity stuff. Because there's always some sort of identification, authentication, and authorization to be able to get to the base data, the basic data, that you need to verify the proofs on the blockchain. Because as, I, as we mentioned before, there's nothing on the blockchain. There's only hashes on the blockchain. So you need access to the basic data to be able to produce the hash yourself or the proof yourself. To be able to compare that with the hash that's been put on the blockchain years, months, weeks, days, seconds before. Well, that's it. Let's start. I found a few. Um, need light. So this is um, Risk Ebis, and uh, I've met them uh, on the CTA um, Congress. It's a worldwide congress on uh, uh, how we should uh, be doing ICT. Uh, for agro in the coming uh, years. So we've uh, discussed uh, about blockchain application there with many people and uh, all kinds of good ideas and wild ideas came up and of course the ICOs were there uh, asking for money before they explained what they were, were going to do. Um, so in this field there was somebody um, I think had a, a really good idea, he's Michiel Beeren, he's, he's a Dutchman and uh, they are into the, the insurance business, so they want to give insurance for the farmers. So the, the first chain in the in the chain of in the business process of of, uh, of agro. And uh, so I went to his website. And I will scroll through it. And um, that, well, that's Michiel. There he is, and his colleague is there too. So, but I couldn't find really find anything. So I I, I phoned him. I said, Michiel, would you please send me some stuff that I can maybe present tonight? Uh, what you're really doing in the field? So he sent me this uh, this PDF, and we could go <coughs> and look through this and find ideas of what they they educate us. So uh, they say, what is blockchain technology? And they, they introduced the idea of smart contracts, how blockchain will disrupt our markets, etc. I'm sorry. There's personal issues. <laughs> I'm trying to deal with it. Okay. I'm working on it. You're, you're in the team as well? No, no. no. <laughs> okay. No. no, no. <laughs> but, Ignore. you know, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to introduce this as, as something to laugh about because I'm, not, I'm, I'm like, being fine. recorded here, but. But yeah. I think it's still a good idea, but it's just that we, what we're trying to do is judge whether this uh, initiative is mature or immature. Is, is it focused or not? I will show you the whole list of my, uh, what would you call that, uh, criteria. Criteria. Yeah. Yeah. criteria. Parameters or something. Sorry? Parameters. Oh, parameters, parameters, yeah. Okay. Parameters. Yeah. I will show you my list and you can shoot on that. That's whether it's good or not. So I would go, I, I, I'll show you what I do. I go through this list and see what, do they have a point somewhere? Do they, do they, do they touch the right tone? Whatever. So uh, that, that was um, Risky Biz. Then we have Ripe.io. 
And the first thing that happened to me here is that I wanted to see their white paper. And I had to fill out a whole list of questions before I got, uh, I might get to the white paper, but uh, they, they still had to send it to me. And what they do is um, they say, uh, we create new analytics around shelf life, put users in sustainable, provide basal income, et cetera, et cetera, trying to supply chain. I couldn't figure out which kind of blockchain they would use. Do they make their own blockchain? Do they create money? Are they doing an ICO? So I thought, okay, maybe it's interesting to know what kind of words they use on their site to judge whether they are doing ICOs or creating a token or um, that, they, that they at all know what they're talking about, for example. So you could use the word blockchain and search for that. And, and you get a few hits. Now I'll show you the... Oh, that's always a good one. It crashed, so I hope the autosave has something there. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> we'll try to find the other one. Okay, I have to open the door. Yeah, this is one. Okay, so what I've what I've done is um, is sustainable agro blockchainable and what I want to do is these do I have a pointer with yeah. this one? No, but you can use my phone. Oh, that, that one. Okay. There's a So here we have a list of criteria. And for example, the number of members on the website, you can simply count them. Um, I looked at Risky Biz already, there's a few more over there. Uh, and I counted five members in there, I counted two members. Can I ask something? Uh, if it's a service based website, the number of members, what is that defined by? Uh, I mean, the people they would say, uh, uh, this oh, is like our team. team. Members. Yeah, okay. exactly, team members. Sorry, so. I was thinking so, registration. Uh, it's my bad. Um, no, no, it's a false number. So is there a white paper, yes or no? It's a very easy, um, objective measure. Uh, I don't say anything about the white paper because in the white paper can be a lot of bullshit too and a lot of uh, um, window dressing and a lot of uh, trying to chase you around. But um, at least it's some sort of a parameter uh, whether there's a, uh, a white paper or not. No high of money creation. That's I think that's a very important one, um, but that's my per my personal perspective. And this one, legal identity too, and that's one that Josie pointed out pretty strictly. Integration in the current business process. We already have the auditors. We already have a system of value control. Maybe it's centralized at some points, but we still have it. So how does this solution? work with that situation and not against it or totally apart from it. You can score those things yourself. I would say score between zero and five and, and just make your stomach answer the question because it's your personal uh, ranking. And with every ranking, you can weigh it too. So somebody, for, for example, if you, have, if, if you happen to find fundamental textual flaws in the, in the site uh, concerning blockchain theory, uh, somebody's uh, selling bullshit on the website, then in my case, I would, I would uh, judge that very strongly uh, as, a, as a bad thing. So I would weight my score here heavily, but somebody who's new in the field can't judge it. Uh, they can't read through the, through the correct use words. So you can say a, a, a fully understandable language in English or in Dutch using all the correct words, but still the whole sentence doesn't make sense. 
I should have come up with an example, but like lawyers and legal documents. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, we had a very famous uh, uh, actor, Dr. Anders P. Uh, uh, he's a Dutchman, and he could make these full sentences. Um, and, and you think, okay, okay, I, I heard it's Dutch, and I heard it's a sentence, but I can't make any clue out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what some presenters do when they're talking about blockchain, uh, unfortunately. Because there's many um, newbies in the, in the room uh, that are uh, some kind of misformed the very first time that they get in. So, um, but again, I, I've lost track. So I have to be, um, it, it's a personal thing how much you weight a certain, a certain score. For example, this, this you can do also uh, without any judgment, without any, um, you can do that neutrally. You can see, if, you've, if you use the words site, site, double, and then you go, for example, to new.nl, and you type in any word here, you will find all the hits on this site concerning or uh, containing this word. So if we would put in blockchain, we would find exactly how many hits we have on the site new.nl, um, with blockchain, and that comes in very handy. If you do that with with these sites, that we are still in the agro business, finding out whether which initiative is good and mature, and, and which initiative is not good and, and not mature, immature. Um, you could could do that. And what I found out, for example, AgriLazer has only two hits on. Uh, no, no hits on legal and two hits on identity. That says me that they haven't thought over their own solution enough. Because otherwise you would be like, oh, and that's where my my whole uh, judgment is gone. But you have to you, you have to uh, because it, it has crashed and it didn't say it. That's that's my escape, by the way. But. Uh, um, what, what was the Providence, for example, had, I, I know it by heart, they had here, they had 50 uh, hits on legal and 20 on identity, and no hits either on token and ICO. That means they're not trying to sell their idea as an ICO or a token, they don't want to create money, but they still have thought over very well um, how they fit in the legal landscape, how they fit, how they try to fix it. Um, the identity issues as well. It, it's not a 100% proof that they're right. It's, it only proves that these words con are contained on the website. But doesn't say anything, maybe. They might have a good story writer say, right in there. But if the whole picture is complete, then you can conclude that they're doing the right way. Doing it the right way, or going in the right direction. Agri-Ledger, I will show you a site there. So what, what, this is, by the way, um, RIPE, it's a company, and um, what they do is that they, they, will help, they will help you out. They will help you um, uh, translate your new rules that you want to make with your service providers, formerly known as centralized parties. With, your, with, with these service parties, they help you to integrate that and make smart contracts, etc. But it's not clear at all which kind of blockchain they use. And given the fact that there only was five people, and I would go to their simply to their company profile and meet the team, and there's not not a single technical person inside. So my strong suspicion is that this is only a very beginning initiative. I don't want to judge them, but it's it's my personal personal. Uh, Thing. I wouldn't rate them very high uh, for this reason. Because I have to do it quickly. And I go quickly over to AgriLedger. And they have a picture where they say what's their problem that they want to solve. And I like that because they, they, they focused on a certain thing. Um, which is already a good thing because if you're too broad and you think that, that blockchain is a Swiss knife to every problem you can solve, uh, that says something to me too. So if somebody is focusing on a certain solution, I like that. Yeah. 
And you see here the documents, you, you, you said trans, how are they? transaction documents. Transaction documents, for example. Yeah. You, could, you could, of course, why would you put them in, 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 the, in the treasure box of, of, uh, of fair trade? Why, why not hash them and use that hash as a pointer to some public data and um, make a file before it, uh, or a login screen and authorize people to, to be able to look it up if they want to? And you will see as soon as they can that they don't want it anymore because we have um, uh, ruled out the need for trust. And that's, that's the main point. If we can rule out the trust, and we don't need the trust anymore. So we don't have to, to, to say, well, I don't trust you or I don't trust you and I want, to, I want to check it, I want to verify it, I want to validate it all the time. As soon as you ruled out trust, you will see that you don't want to check it. You don't need to check it. So I like this specific part of Archilature. Of course, I don't like the fact that they um, they uh, have not thought over the legal and identity stuff, and the integration in current processes wasn't there either. So they haven't made any, um, let's say, public connections or, or they're not working together yet, actually, with these companies. And then we have provenance. And that's, I think that's, uh, that was my best one, uh, I found. Because not only they are uh, they are educating us, they, um, they speak at, at many uh, events. Uh, they obviously have thought over the fact uh, that you can only handle proofs on the blockchain. And you need the basic data to check and validate it all the time if you want to. So um, they would score high in my in, in, in my sheet, and I will restore the sheet for you later. But maybe you can help me out with um, a few because the list of criteria is still pretty correct. I haven't had much. Um, they have this. quite a few members. They have a white paper. They have no ICO. Yeah. They, they, they don't want to, uh, neither of them, any of them, uh, none of them, sorry, that's what's the word, none of them wants to do an ICO. That's, I think that's a good thing. We don't know. Can we see the members in comparison to the previous ones? So the team members of the one that you just displayed. Oh, provenance, he wants to see the provenance. On provenance side, yeah. yeah. Just so we can compare something that has like, my hearing is very bad. Yeah, so I'm talking to quite soft. I can't control it at the moment. I'll try better. So you, so you, you want <laughs> to see more? You want, you want no, to see more? The, the people. The people. people. Okay, the people. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. I'm not in my shadow. Maybe us. Oh, maybe us. Yeah, us. Where? At the top. Okay, good. Help me out. Same. 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 Yeah. Return to Chrome. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank Very you. And then tell us about how it works. Team. Yeah. You see, you can do better than I do. <laughs> Not. Hey, business analyst, blockchain. I haven't counted the members there, but it's just a, it's just an exercise. Yeah. You know, I wanted to show you how you can put on your own criteria. Uh, you, you measure them either um, as facts uh, or you score, you score them. And you do that from your belly. You just say, okay, it gives me the feel of a 6 uh, to 10, or it gives me the feel of a 2 to 5. Um, and then, of course, you have to weight them. Uh, one criterion is more important for you than the other one. But that's a very personal thing. It's really nice that you do this. Kind of like this whole service that you're doing, educating people, 
mm -hmm. it's really necessary. <laughs> Like, like what you're doing is very yeah. necessary. Okay, yeah. You're doing okay, thank you. something really good. Like yeah. people need to hear this stuff. Yeah. And I wish a lot more people like uh, at big meetups and conferences would have the same desire to go through the same progress or process to teach people. Yeah. On how to spot these things because it's getting a bit crazy out there. Yeah. Um, especially some right. meetups I've been to, like in, even in Amsterdam and things. Yeah. 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 It's a bit of it's a bit of a joke, really. Yeah. Has everybody heard the, mm -hmm. the edition? Okay. Better, better than I did, most probably. Okay. So in the next few months, my hearing problem might be fixed yeah. you know, with gear, but... No. Hank, just remember, it was a recognition. Okay. <laughs> we just gave you a compliment. So yes, okay. say yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, that's what I wanted to conclude. Um, we have, uh, like, be very aware that you have to look for uh, the fact that people think over legal aspects, identity, that they have to be integrating the stuff, that they are not out there uh, with creating, with, with the need for creating their own token, do their fork, like Bas explained, so create a new blockchain, because most of the times it's not needed at all. Uh, and if you do that, and you score them for yourselves, then you, you will be And that was what I wanted to share with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.